dive. We live! Hey! Hello, everyone. Thank you for bearing with us. Yeah, experiencing thing. Uh, technical difficulties? Nah, well, kind of. Also, bug, bug difficult, nature difficulties? Natural difficulties. Specifically, mosquito kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have moved the kitchen to a car. I am not actually traveling. I am simply just um, avoiding mosquitoes. Trying to be in a place where the connection is at least decent. And also, still trying to manage my get up here so that. Um. So, hi everybody, how's it going? You doing well today? Are you, um, experiencing life? <laughs> and in an enjoyable manner. Are you experiencing life? Are you enjoying Are you experiencing it? Life? Uh, period. Are you among the living or are you one of the undead? If you are an undead, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. If you are among <laughs> the living, you know what to do. Smash that like button. You know, subscribe. That's. <laughs> Uh, no, no particular reason to subscribe. Unless, unless you feel like that's a good idea. <laughs> um, so, yeah. How are you doing today, Derek? I'm doing fantastical. I've been, I just spent like four hours editing a video. Four hours doing what? I spent four hours editing a video this morning. And then oh. checking on some clients' work. And that's it. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Um, talked to you a little bit this morning and um, played around. And honestly, didn't do a whole lot of anything except for maybe show the family a little bit, eat some food, breakfast and lunch, that sort of thing. Food is um, delicious. I love it. Food is. I'm, you know, I'm glad. I'm. I'm I'm torn and I'm glad. You know, part of me is like, that'd be so cool if we didn't have to eat. Because then <laughs> we have to worry about money, pretty much. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't have to make a living. You could just do whatever you want. But then, at the same time, I have to say, you know, I'm glad that we have food because food is delicious. And also, I think if food didn't exist, we wouldn't really have anybody trying to achieve much because you wouldn't have economy. <laughs> Pretty much. So kind of like a win win or win win lose catch twenty two, whatever they call that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good geez, thing. The chat is not loading for some reason. Uh oh. That's oh fix that immediately. There hey there, Anna. Love you too, thank you. Um once again, welcome back, Anan Yugash. Um um, so everybody's asked, doing what are the rules since this is your what are the stream you can go ahead and explain all right sure um basically because this is my stream i'm gonna set up the rules right now um whatever derek says <laughs> <laughs> um pretty much don't be a jerk we had some people saying hail hitler earlier and i had to time him out um some of you may think that's funny that's fine you can do whatever you want, but be respectful of others. And overall, just be a cool person. Don't be a... Trying not to curse here, but... Don't be a... Don't be a bad person. Yeah. Um, don't be a meanie. Yeah, don't be mean. You, don't pick on anybody. If you're thinking, I wonder if this is okay to say. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some things really are, but, you know... Just use your, um, there's something called tax, or, um, what's the other thing? Prudence? Um, yeah, just use that. Be taxful. Have prudence. So, um, am, am I the one that's hosting today, or are you? Uh, you are. 
Okay, well, welcome to Don't Worry Everybody. Uh, if you don't know what this is, we basically um, take your comments. Um, if you're worrying about anything or if you have something in your mind you just want to talk about that is a life issue, um, you want some advice on, or maybe even just uh, your friend should need advice on or something like that. If you have anything along those lines, um, anything you're worrying about, just let it write it in the comments and we'll give it our best shot to give you our best based off of our own life experiences and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, mm -mm. So, anyway, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, just leave your comments below. Uh, and we're, we'll reply as much as we can. We're here to have a good time. It's not necessarily, here, not necessarily all um, uh, what do you call it? Serious business. Um, so we'll have fun. We'll enjoy you guys' company and you'll enjoy ours. And um, yeah. So we do have a question from Firefox. They asked I am more on the antisocial side. I have a hard time breaking out of my shell, and my parents are concerned about this. Can I get some advice on how to deal with this problem? Oh, okay. Um, sure. Do you want to start with that, or do you want me to go? Uh, we can go ahead. Okay. Um, being antisocial, um, is generally a thing about fearing what others will think about you. Um, I know this from my experience a lot of times, you know, well, when I was younger, I was kind of antisocial. I was always worried, um, you know, like I might say the wrong thing, or, um, people will judge me and that sort of thing. Um. And yeah, sure, people do judge others, and it's unfortunate. But the, you know, in a in a way that they shouldn't, I should say. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, there are also different personalities where sometimes you just really don't desire to interact with people. Um, for example, myself or my brother, um, we don't seek out people. You know, when people talk to us, we respond, but um, we're not always looking for social engagement. Um, so I think it'd be good for people to understand that if that is your personality, if you don't really seek that sort of thing just because you don't um, desire it. Um, but there are points in which you do desire it. I think everybody in their life experiences things like, you know, um, I do desire communication with other people. I think the thing is to, um, to start trying to be the best you and to allow yourself the chance to be humiliated and embarrassed and have fun with that. Um, when I was in high school, well, I should say all throughout my life, pretty much my from like probably third grade all the way until the last few years of high school, I was bullied and I had a lot of social anxiety. Um, but during my last two years, I started to, like I just told you, try to be the best version of myself I could be. I tried to put myself out there and I learned to enjoy being embarrassed. I learned to do embarrassing things on purpose um, because it was funny and it was it was like it would engage people and they'd be like that was hilarious you know um, and I realized that as soon as I stopped worrying so much about what other people thought I would get along with people really well um, because I was nice to people and that's really generally main thing you need to have friends or uh, communicate with people is if you know how to be nice you know how to compliment somebody, say, hey, nice shoes, nice pants, nice shirt, nice everything. I like your whole body, everything from the top of your oh hair my. to skin <laughs> in the foot. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, people know how to compliment each other. They know how to say nice things, and uh, I'm sure you do, too. So if you're worried about um, social anxiety, if it's stopping you from um, enjoying yourself and enjoying other people, basically learn not to judge yourself so much in a way that prevents you from getting out there. Um, people do judge you, but who cares? I mean, what they think about you isn't what determines who you are. Um, someone might think I'm retarded. It doesn't make me retarded. Someone might think I'm 17 feet tall. Obviously, I'm not. I'm 16 feet tall. I... <laughs> not, <laughs> uh, but anyhow, yeah, so... Um, don't worry about what other people think. Uh, I think that's the main thing about social anxiety. And don't let yourself, don't put yourself down. Don't be worried about how 
you think about yourself. Because I think a lot of times we prevent ourselves from being the best version of ourselves. Um, and we need to kind of just allow ourselves to be ourselves and not worry so much. But anyhow, that's my best advice, and I'm looking forward to what Derek has to say about it. Um, for the antisocial, yeah, as Ryan says, there's really no um, really direction to go about it, I suppose. I was antisocial too, but I think my reasons were not because I was really like scared about what I was going to say. It was more just I didn't have the desire <laughs> really to talk to anybody. And then it was after, it was during my high school year, I think I was like a sophomore. I just got more out of my shell, I guess. Um, I don't think I was really forced out of it. I think it just happened more or less because I think I was just starting to have fun <laughs> with life. It sounds mm -hmm. weird, but my antisocial was because I never had the desire to talk to someone. And then there's, as Ryan explains, there's people that are thinking before they want to say anything. And then before they even say anything, they're already like fighting against themselves. Like, oh no, if you say that, no one's gonna, no one's gonna like you. Everyone's gonna think you're weird. So if you're in like that category of antisocial where you're judging your words before you even say them or making up scenarios that will probably not happen, then as Ryan says, the best way to go about it is just kind of just go out there and do it. Make the experience and learn from it because if you make up things in your head, you're never going to learn anything except learn how to make up more experiences and then you'll start getting really creative and weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, and then, uh, awesome. Yeah, you're going to start writing magical stories and stuff, which is going to be cool, but it won't help you too much if you're trying to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in the other category as myself, where you just have no desire to talk to, to anybody, then that's kind of on you. <laughs> If you want to talk to someone, go talk to someone. If you don't want to talk to someone, that's also fine. Um, when you're younger, I'm not trying to like do the age thing, but when you're younger, people are more inclined to like, oh, you don't talk to anyone, you're a loner, because you're like five years old. That's like the biggest thing you could pick on someone about. <laughs> but as you get older, people have more understanding, experience, and more respectful to like, oh, Derek doesn't want to talk to anyone. That's totally fine. When I do talk to him, he's actually very knowledgeable and blah, 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 blah. So right now, I'd say not worry about too much. But if you are the one that's creating that antisocial, as myself was, being not desirable to talk to anybody or not desiring to talk to anybody, then make the make the leap and go talk to that dude with the nice shoes that's six feet tall and has some bunny ears. Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the bunnies, bunnies here. Mm, yeah. I think, um, you know, in, if you want to have fun with people, just go have fun and totally be a weirdo. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> like, just being weird, like having fun being you, even though you might think is probably one of the best ways to gain friends because then you gain friends that know who you are, know that you're weird, and it kind of causes people to be more interesting back to you. Um, no, I don't know. If if you're worried about something like that, just, just have fun. Um, go up to people and be like, ah, I like your shoes, and then run away. <laughs> and they'll be like, what the heck is wrong with that guy? And then you'll go up later and be like, no, man, I'm just kidding with you. Hey, how's your how's your day going? And they'd be like, I'm doing good. That was really weird. You're creepy. And I'm like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, then, and you start up a conversation because it's like, what? <laughs> but, yeah, just just go out there and be silly. It's, it's actually yeah. really effective. Uh-huh. And um, Ro asked a question to tie into this question where she said, what if you happen to suck at talking, like not sure how to create or follow a conversation? And I think Ryan actually answered that just now. Just go and do it. Have fun with it. Someone's going to get your humor. Someone's not going to get your humor. It's totally fine. Everyone has different ways of doing things, accepting things, and et cetera. And that's totally fine. I'm sure you have your own ways of like, oh, I don't like the way that guy said that. Or I don't like the way that girl is talking to me. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. It's just your kind of like confirmation that you don't want to be this person's friend or associate with them. And then you go to the next person and you'd be like, hey... 
sup <laughs> and then that person hey. will be like hey sup too i like you and, then, <laughs> and there you go you made friends man and then oh. you guys can have the drawing drawing row rows <laughs> nice yeah you know Ro, i know you personally and you're a wonderful uh conversationalist I, i've never had a problem talking to you about anything and it's, i haven't felt like you've had a problem talking to me at all so if that helps give you confidence um use that because Seriously, you're just really actually pretty easy to talk to. And we get along great. So. I haven't. I think it's housing. Oh wait, am I like really lag behind, or did she repost that? Which one? Uh, the real question. question. But like, oh, what man, happened? To you might be a little uh, bit. <laughs> uh, far behind. Oh well. Such is. This Such situation. is life. <laughs> Oh well. How do I get a girlfriend? As Calvin. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, the thing is, if you have a girl in mind, then sure. Um, but if you don't have any girl in mind in particular, and you're just trying to get a girlfriend, trying to get in a relationship, you're doing that because you feel like you have some sort of need that ought to be met. Like, um, you want to feel good about yourself, and getting a girlfriend makes you do that. And I can kind of say that, sure, that is a nice feeling when someone likes you with that. But if you're searching for that, I think that a lot of times when we're searching for that, it's the worst time to be searching for that. Rather, people that are best cut out for relationships are those who aren't really looking for them because they've got it figured out and they don't need somebody to be the crutch. They don't need someone to love them. They've already figured out enough in life that they feel loved regardless of whether you are a part of their life or not necessarily. Um, I think that's, you know, should be said. Uh, I'm not saying that you're in that position, but I just kind of wanted to say that because um, I would suggest if you're looking for somebody, stop trying to look and start trying to um, not worry so much about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, for those too in the, in the chat, Great. if you're searching for love or just searching for a relationship in general i kind of want to say that i want to kind of put the blame on society and film and tv shows that kind of push that agenda like oh you want to be happy then you need this which is fine um some people are more acceptable to that where they'll look at it and be like oh man i need that in my life i need to have a girl blah 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 but something i've actually just learned something i just learned recently is that you can have everything you ever wanted but if you're still hurting you're still lonely you're still just sad it may not actually fill that void you may think it does because everyone says it does but that person is living their own life with their own chemistry and their own feelings and thoughts which you also have your own feelings and thoughts and chemistry you may not exactly get that happiness that you desire from obtaining a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You may have this temporary self-satisfaction and maybe lift up your spirits a tiny bit, but there's a good chance that it may not do nothing for you. Now, I'm not trying to like put you down and say, just ignore all advice you ever hear, but don't be too quick to jump on the, ba the, the wagon of, if I do what I see, I will obtain the same dream. No, because I think the first thing to being happy and loving life is to learn to love yourself and find out what it is exactly that makes you feel that way. And that's going to be a long journey for everyone. Uh, but once you find those things and learn exactly, oh, maybe I don't need this. I want this because it's going to fill this hole. But you're filling this hole with water that can easily be poured out, that can easily dry up. And then once it's done, you're just going to have this hole again. So instead mm -hmm. of filling it up with something that is easily expendable, fill it up with things that are actually important and then uh, cement those things into that hole, starting with yourself. And soon enough, you might just have someone that gravitates towards you and that's true love. That is uh, the true meaning of this so thing called the, the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Ryan's cute. Okay. Very well. <laughs> yep. 
Very well said. Whoops. I accidentally hit something on my button. Um, so here's another question from... <laughs> wait, I, I think we said Haley Potter. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. They asked, how do you deal with friend zone? Sad face. Ah, friend zone. Mm, uh -huh. This is going to be fun. Uh, you want to start? Um, sure. So, how do you deal with friend zone? Well, you have two options here. You either don't deal with it, and you move on, or you deal with it, and you move on. Now, what do I mean by those things? <laughs> um, when you don't deal with it, whoever it is that friend zoned you, you immediately stop talking to them, you start giving them the cold shoulder, you start being a jerk, and then you move on with your life. Or you learn to accept that this person does not have the same feelings as you do, does not reciprocate the love that you have for them, and you, you deal with it. You learn to be respectful, if you will, because that's really what it comes down to. You can't force someone to like you or love you or have the same feelings that they have or that you have for them, because that's just actually being selfish at that point. You can you can have these feelings for someone and it's okay if they don't like you back or they don't feel the same way. And it's really up to you if how you get out of it. And it's not going to be <laughs> super helpful if you're clingy or if you make up these scenarios in your head where, oh, maybe if I do this. This kind of ties into the last question more so that I kind of blame it on uh, society and media where someone someone on the show has feelings for someone but they find someone to be in a relationship with and they're doing all they can to win them back and then it works and then happily ever after then credits roll for like one hour but sometimes it, <laughs> sometimes that just doesn't actually work in reality I'm not saying that it doesn't it, it's still a slight chance that you could possibly be that one percent that wins over the love of their life it's more so that if you get friend zone, do not be selfish and do not feel like you're owed anything. Be like, oh, I did this for her or him. I did everything. I called them when they needed it. I gave them presents. It's like, cool. That's a, that's a good friend thing you did. That's a good friend thing you did. But they, don't, they may not see you that way, and that's totally fine. They may do the same thing for you. They may call you when you need help. They may give you presents, and you might kind of flip that into like love which love in the friendship way then there's love in the i want to put my face on your face so you, you kind of learn to like different differentiate the two but if you're getting friend zone i think the best advice that i can offer from whatever i can is just go with the flow and if they are really really dedicated to like you know what i I'd like you as a friend that's all it is. Because if you start pushing it, you start pushing your agenda, you might actually turn them away and not want to be your friend at all and have anything to do with you. And then at that point, that's kind of your bad. So just kind of uh, just kind of let, let, let it roll out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, um, I, I agree with all of that. I just kind of want to say just in a way that helps you as an audience to um, understand this. In the, in the best way possible. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to kind of give you a mental breakdown or kind of more of a moral or theological breakdown in a way of this kind of scenario. First question, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No, what is love? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of these points are going to be songs. No, they won't. Um, I don't know enough songs for me to do that. The first thing is, what is love? Love is you doing something for somebody else. I, you know, the way I think love, the best way I can say what love is, is this. Desiring the best for somebody else and being willing to do what it takes to get them that. And sometimes it means allowing them to be by themselves to figure it out for themselves or so that they can grow. Or sometimes that means going out of your way to do something for someone. Um, but love is desiring the best for somebody. 
hate is desiring the worst for someone. Simple enough. Um, but yeah, so desiring the best for somebody, is that you being in a relationship with them? Or is that desiring what you think is the best for you? Or what you think is the best for them, even though it probably isn't? Um, you know, if you love somebody, you're the person that's willing to let them go so they can have the best life possible. You can't say that, oh, their best life possible is them being with me. No, because a parent, clearly, they don't want that for themselves. They want something else. Um, so being friend zone is completely okay. It gives you a chance to be a great friend. But if you really love somebody, then that's desiring the best for them. That's being able to let them go and set yourself aside and your own intentions aside, your own fantasies aside, and help them with what they need. Because um, when you're in a loving relationship, when you are in when a marriage, or whatever, if you still have the mentality of they're there for me, they are there to serve me, or they are there to make me feel good, then your relationship is going to fail, unfortunately. Because the only way a relationship can work is if you're giving yourself to them and they're choosing to give themselves to you and nobody's being obligated to do so. So the first thing is knowing what love is and asking yourself, the second thing is asking yourself, is them friendzoning me and me chasing after them really love or is that me trying to get what I want for me? Um, and the answer is kind of obvious. Sure, maybe they're with some kind of jerk that they you think is not good for them. But being the person that they're in the relationship doesn't really fix that necessarily. Rather, it doesn't it doesn't mean that's the ultimate perfect road for them. Um, the road for them is does have to do with how they feel about things. Um, and if they don't necessarily like you in that way, then don't force it on them. Um, but anyhow, putting that out there, I think I think that makes enough sense for you to decide what you should do from here. I think a lot of it is just taking what Derek said and you understanding it. You are so. really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, a real life beta cat interpreter. Oh, well thank you. <laughs> you did that for me earlier when I was trying to talk about um, the other thing and then you went off on your thing. I was like, dude, that's exactly what I was saying except you did it way better. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're like two peas in a can. Oh, in a two peas in a can. You open up the can. <laughs> you look at it and it's only two peas, and you're like, really? two peas? <laughs> I paid like ten dollars for this. Yes, they said he's be the best piece in the world. There's only two of them. <laughs> Amazing. Better eat one of these and drown in happiness, and then the other one <laughs> with my friend, and he'll drown in happiness. Like ten dollars, nice. two peas. Okay. okay, so we got a question from Ananya. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But she said, I hate it when people are nice to me because I feel like I'll never be a good friend back to them. I feel so lonely in a crowd because I'll never be a good friend. Or be a good enough friend. What do you think about that? Okay. Um, I think the world has a definition of friendship. And it's kind of weird. I remember when I was in, a little kid in school, they, they asked, you know, what is friendship? And you had to define it. And, like, nobody could really put their finger on it. Not even the teacher. Um, I think friendship is a lot of ways exactly like love. It's just rather than being romantic, it's just being mutually loving um, <clears throat> and respectful. Um, but one thing is, you know, when we're kids, we go around and say, will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? And that's not really the right way to look at love because love is, or sorry, friendship. <laughs> Although they're pretty close together. Um, that's not really a good way to look at friendship because, again, it is something you do for somebody else. It's being willing to um, make sacrifices and do things for somebody without even desiring an uh, inkling of anything back. You're just doing it for them because they're your friend. They're awesome. You enjoy being around them. Um, and I think being around somebody is part of perhaps what friendship is. Um, so you have to be enjoyable to be around. Um, those are things you can learn to do. Um, if you don't think that you are 
good at those things, if you don't think that you are good at doing nice things to people or making yourself enjoyable to be around by being pleasant, by engaging them, by asking them questions, by listening to them, whatever the thing is you have to do, um, I suppose you could be right. You know, I have met people who are bad friends out there. But on a brighter side, it's completely possible for you to become a great friend. You could be the best friend in the world. Um, it's something you can learn and train yourself to get better at. All you have to do is think about the individual that is supposed to be your friend and ask yourself a question. What can I do that best helps them? Or what can I do right now that makes them feel good? Um, this is very basic, but generally that's what friendship is. Um, being respectful, listening to what they have to say and understanding and maybe even taking their thoughts and to your life and then doing the same thing back to them. Um, there's no reason you can't be a good friend. I don't really know you personally, so I'm going to trust your judgment. Maybe you, um, maybe you have reasons to think that you wouldn't be a very good friend. But um, I'm sure that you are more likely um, a better friend. Just the fact that you said that makes me think that you're more self-conscious and more self-aware, I should say. You're more self-aware than most people. Most of the time, people who are bad friends are people who are not self-aware. They're very self-centered, but not very self-aware. Not really thinking about things in life, not thinking about whether they're a good friend or not. But I think good friends generally think about that sort of thing. A good friend is somebody who makes the other person better. If someone is making you into a worse person, then they're probably not a good friend. If someone's making you into a better person, then they're probably a great friend. <clears throat> um, so just keep those things in mind. Um, maybe maybe you can get better at your friendships. I wouldn't worry. If, if people give you compliments, by the way, <clears throat> always take it. Say, thank you, because that makes them feel good, um, because their compliment was accepted. If, you, if they give you a compliment and you say, uh, oh, no, this is, you know, it's nice to be humble, but that's different. Um, Saying no to their compliment makes them feel like, oh, geez, they turned down my compliment. Now I feel like they don't trust me. They don't believe what I said. Now it's awkward. Now I have to try to find some other way to compliment them. No, really, I think that you're great at this. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. It's like, I think you, I really said that from my heart. I really think you are great at it. Please don't turn me down. <laughs> it makes me feel weird and awkward and, uh, you know. So it's always good to allow people to compliment you and say thank you for them sincerely. Um, don't don't turn them away so much because, again, that just leads to awkwardness and their sincerity being a, 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 it's like a, putting a wall in front of their face. So, anyways, I'll let Derek take it from here and see what he has to say. First, first, can you lower the volume you lower on your the phone? I cannot. What do you mean? Like, are like, you echoing? I can, yeah, I can hear myself. Okay. Your voice got super high quality. <laughs> oh, it went high quality mode. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I mean, it's good, but for some reason when it happens, I can we can hear myself. Can you hear yourself now? No. Good. Okay, cool. Um. So, yeah. Uh, also, shout out to everyone that's helping each other in the chat. That's super dope. I think this is like yeah. the most it's ever been. Everyone's just helping each other out and that makes Ryan and I very happy. We like it when you do that. We like it very much. Oh. <laughs> Nani. <What? laughs> Timothy Chan will it like this. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, so as Ryan said, friendship is a wide definition everyone has their own form of friendship even the, the bad ones who's <laughs> like oh i like that guy because he punched that dude in the face that's my friend right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah everyone has their own feeling of what a friend is and you won't really know because once again tying back to the previous questions where you're making up these scenarios in your head that haven't even happened yet you're kind of already saying no to yourself you're not allowing them to even have the option to give you an answer, which could possibly be, I really like you. I want to be your friend. Here's a super, super, duper hug. We can go watch animes and eat the popcorn. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, buddy. Uh, I actually don't have too much to add to what Ryan said because he hit it 
he hit the nail on the head, as they say, in the the world of the Earth. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, do what Ryan Sandpiper said, and we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You better call me Sandpiper because I am either your superior. Wait, wait. What is that? You're... I am your. You are the superior grit of paper. <laughs> yes, yes. My my grater is much finer. I, I produce a, a nice sheen polish uh, as opposed to your gritty, uh, low low grit self that really helps to take the, take the, the like whatever when, off. When you the, go to the, the hardware store, it goes 300 grit, 500 grit, and then sand pie. <laughs> <laughs> and then sand pie. <laughs> nice. Sandpie paper. Sandpie paper coon. Paper coon. That is not the Japanese accent. This is more Russian, if anything. Um, so <laughs> we have another question from Star Wolf. I think it kind of ties All in right. to the other one about not antisocial, but just socially awkward. Star Wolf said. Mm. I am. If someone compliments me, like my face turns red and stuff, and I'm not sure how to respond, and I just try to shake it off and change the subject and stuff. Please help. Okay. Um, sometimes you just gotta embrace them in a really long hug. That's way too long, <laughs> and you're like, and then they feel uncomfortable, but then you feel uncomfortable together. Um. I agree. <laughs> you think I'm joking though, but it's honest. Honestly, um, if you just hug somebody, sometimes it makes things less awkward. And if you give them like an a quick hug, it becomes awkward. But if you give them like a really long hug, that's like way too long, um, it becomes funny, and it's no longer awkward. It's just like, okay, you can let go now. <laughs> it's like, no man, no, I just mm, the hug, man. You just smell so <clears throat> good. <laughs> just not so good. Like I, ha I'm seriously I'm sweaty. <laughs> and just start petting them on the I'll head be... softly. <laughs> but yes, just make it as weird as possible. Um, no, I think I can relate to that. Sometimes, here's the weird thing. If you are nice to somebody, and it makes you feel nice, and then you're nice back, and it makes them feel nice, it's like there's no end to this, and it's like. This weird looping, like, this, a sense of joy. It's like joy, but then it doesn't end, and it's like, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I can totally relate to that. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. Um, maybe teaching the subject is is a good thing. I mean, um, that way the topic can move forward. Um, but you can... Always, you know, just say thank you. That's like I really appreciate that, and um, maybe move on from there, or give them a compliment, and then see what that turns into. But um, honestly, I don't really know what to say on behalf of being like embarrassed or caught up in the moment of joy. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. It might be somewhat uncomfortable because it's not something we're used to, but um, in a way that's good. And so I just say. Don't worry if it's uncomfortable. Embrace it. Take it and just enjoy that. And be like, yeah, this is embarrassing, but I'm I like it. It's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be it even if it's slightly uncomfortable, it doesn't mean it's bad, right? It's it's kind of like a good discomfort. Um and so just take it, enjoy it. And if you want to change the topic, that's fine. But if you want to just hug it out, that's awesome. Um people will actually like that. Um, or if you want to uh, give them a bowl of Fruit Loops, be like, "Hold on, I'll be right back," and then come back an hour <laughs> later because it takes a while to get a bowl of Fruit Loops. And be like, "Man, I got this bowl of Fruit Loops for you because I love you so much, dude. Enjoy, you've earned this." And then let them chow on the chow down on that Fruit Loops, and you know, um, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever floats your uh, ski do, um, and. <laughs> as they don't say uh, <laughs> as no one said before um, <clears throat> but yeah uh, to be honest I don't really have a exact answer other than change your perspective about it and just allow yourself to take it in and be like yeah it is what it is and I appreciate it um, so yeah 
Oh, you guys want hugs? Here you go. Some, some sweet hugs. Nice. Nice. Mm, yeah. Uh, Hug him to good one. Come on, I'll uh, hug you to yeah. good one also. I love you so much, man. The way that you... <laughs> the way that you smell. <laughs> I like the way you smell. I like you smell. <laughs> like, um, that's kind of creepy. Don't worry. I like that you're creeped out right now also. It <laughs> 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 happens. makes me even love you harder. So much I'm... Grasp you within my hug even tighter. Hold on, embrace yourself. Tighten your muscles because the hard hug aggressiveness is coming forth. Bring your might, for the aggressive hug comes in its mighty form, and you shall be squeezed almost to death to the tiniest bit of sand in which you are created in and forced into a greater love that refines your soul into a sweet, tasty diamond. Yes. <laughs> Timothy, <laughs> what? Timothy Kuhn says as he grasps onto Amanda Chan tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Chan mm. stares with boggled eyes. She has been the bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> Man has received 100 experience points. Successful victory. <laughs> Plus 100 charisma. Charisma? <laughs> Plus 100 charisma. You can now go venture forth and talk to that knight that would not let you speak to him before. Embrace him in hug that gives diamonds and fury and much experience points for greater charisma. Someday you shall rule the world as king. Said King Dragon. <laughs> And you will evolve into a new state of matter, Dragon Ball Z, where you will become Dragon and Ball Z. <laughs> I just used Ball Z as a form of a word that was totally accent. That was smooth. <clears throat> okay, what are we talking about? That was smooth lactose butter. Butter. Uh... Oh, that's another thing you can do. Um, just lather yourself in butter and then hug them. <laughs> so... When they try to get away, they'll actually succeed, and then you won't look as creepy, but they'll be covered in delicious butteriness. So you'd be able to track them down with your mm. nose. But like, oh, Amanda Chan, I know you behind that nice, tree, girl. Nice. I know you behind that tree. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell you with my sniffy sniffs. I can smell your delicious perfume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you smell like popcorn, girl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you, and when I do, I'm gonna give you a delicious hug. You making my heart go to poppy the pops. Corn pops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw popcorn at you, and then pick them off and eat them because that's how much I love your buttery scent. Because you smell like butter. Because I put butter on you. Oh, Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we hope I'm you answered your question. <laughs> yeah, we answered your question. I think we did. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm at 14% battery because I started with like 50. Oops. <laughs> started with like 50. <laughs> 50. Oops. But, um, uh, yeah, so I'm at like 14%. <laughs> Get wrecked. I love you too, guys. By the way, I've seen your comments. I can't reply to them all, especially like when one, either of our, us are talking. But I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Potato. Thank you. Thank you, Otinane. Thank you, Anyan, Ananya, for all your questions. And honestly, the show is running off of your guys' questions. So uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate you coming forth and kind of putting your worries out there. And... Allowing us to, allowing yourselves to hear our advice, even though, you know, we're just going through life with you. We don't know all the answers. Um, but yeah, thank you, every one of you, for uh, being here on the stream with us and enjoying <clears throat> enjoying the time that we have together. Um, eventually, I'll get a computer again that can I can stream from, and I'll be able to see and reply a lot better. Right now, I'm currently, like, lagged behind, like, two or three minutes, so I'm seeing your conversa conversations from, like, ever ago but yeah hug rpg i think that's a great idea for a game <laughs> starring hug son 
And his pet Hugson. friend, Pet Chad. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> but yeah, um, once again, if you are not already subscribed to Static, go ahead and do so if you are new to the stream. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you know when we go live and you don't miss a second of it, even though we start late. But it's better if you're there, <laughs> even if we're late. Yeah. And also, yeah, the stream and is uploaded again on Monday for those who just want to watch it all over again and relive the awesomeness, which is Ryan dropping his phone. <laughs> oh. Yes, that is part of awesomeness. <clears throat> that was one of the awesomest things ever. The world almost stopped to admire it. But it decided to just keep on turning. I think that's what happens with most things in life. Um, What you... If you want to have a good time, if you want to have, like, an enjoyable life, I think the best advice I can give you is to go to um, youtube.com slash thebetacat, just as you see it on the screen, and subscribe to his channel. Everything on his channel is him doing stuff. And that'll make your life a little bit better. <laughs> I'm doing all the stuff. Okay, maybe that's not the best uh, <laughs> life advice in the world, but it is good advice. So I, I I would recommend it. Like if you went into the goggles and you searched for top five best of life tips of 2017, the first one will be subscribe to Ryan. The next one will be subscribe to the beta cat. And then the next one would be chocolate mousse. <laughs> and then the, the fourth one would be chocolate squirrel and then the chocolate fifth one squirrel, would dude. be popcorn <laughs> yes much many much popcorn you know <laughs> people are never offended when you offer them popcorn and so if, they if, do, if you, you don't want them that negativity in your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't need that that's so negative that's so terrible you should just go to school with cookies and popcorn and be like hey friend where well, we've never met before but um Friend, I got you this popcorn because I want to be your friend. And I also got you this cookie just in case you don't like popcorn. But also because everyone likes cookies. Um, from tomorrow on, <clears throat> we're going to be in a friendship relationship. Um, you don't have much <laughs> say in the matter. Because I've seen you've already dug into that popcorn. And um, that's, the way, um, that's the way this works. This is friendship pop. Everyone, go on Twitter and tag hash hash, hash number sign. <laughs> you know what? Number sign. Never mind. I can't English. Go on Twitter. <laughs> hashtag Ryan. Popcorn friends, and then send them a picture of popcorn. Do that right now on Twitter. Nice. Make a trend. <laughs> friendship popcorn. <laughs> You should draw a pop. You should have popcorn, like a bunch of popcorn sitting on like a table, just kind of out displayed, and write little faces on them, and make them have conversations with each other. That'd be like a meme. <laughs> One of them be like, "Hey, you're on top of me," and the other one's like, "Oh, you're on top of me." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and he's upside down, and so he's like, "You're on top of me." <laughs> Because it doesn't understand gravity, because popcorn doesn't really understand gravity. They only understand friendship. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's a whole different science. So yeah, we hope you all enjoyed the stream, and we will see you the next one. The next one, bye bye. Bye.